have a really fun video for you all today. I mentioned in my last video that I had a bunch of fun DIYs planned and I finally got around to doing all of them and I wanted to share them with you. These are super easy, really simple DIY. Of course, all neutral and rustic, which is just my style. All the DIYs use materials that you probably already have or that are really cheap and affordable. So these are some very low budget DIYs, but they're so, so cute. I linked all of the materials that I use in the description below. And I also wrote a blog post with all of the instructions so you can always refer to that as well but let's get started right away you all probably know by now how obsessed I am with garlands. <laughs> you can probably see my garlands in the background. So of course I have two super simple garland ideas for you. This first garland is super simple. It's a no sew garland because I can barely sew. <laughs> so we're just going to use a hot glue gun. But if you do know how to sew, you can definitely do it like that. And they would also come out just as cute. You're going to need a fabric of your choice, a hot glue gun, fabric scissors, stuffing for your little heart, and a string to tie your garland together. I found this gorgeous white fuzzy fabric fabric at my local reuse store so I bought some of that but you can use felt or any other fabric that you might have lying around your home then it's really simple first you're going to create a heart shape you can print one out online there's tons of templates for heart patterns or you can do what I did and just freehand it <laughs> draw a little template cut it out and then use that for the rest of your hearts the key to getting a symmetrical heart is folding the piece of fabric over in half and only drawing half of your pattern so that way it comes out perfectly even on both sides so what I did is I cut a bunch of little squares of fabric, folded those in half, used my little template to draw the heart half on it, and then cut a bunch of them out. You can make as many hearts for your garland as you'd like, but you'll need double of however many you're going to make. So for example, I made five little hearts for my garland, so I cut out 10 hearts. Once you have all your hearts cut out, you're going to start gluing them together. You want to put the hot glue around the border as close to the edge as you can get, and then lay the other heart on top. Do this all the way around until you leave a small hole at the bottom. The hole needs to be big enough for you to get some stuffing in. I left the hole about like an inch big so that I could just do it with my finger. But if you do need to, you can use like a little chopstick or a stick or a pen or something to push the stuffing in. You can buy stuffing at Michael's or Joann's. I used an old pillow, the stuffing from an old pillow. But if you do a lot of fabric projects and you have a lot of scrap fabric, you can also use that as a stuffing. It's really just to give your heart some shape. Just be careful not to overstuff. Since you only have a thin line of glue around the edge, it could open up. Then once you're done, just glue it closed and you have a heart done. And once you've created all your little hearts, then you just need to glue the string on the back of the hearts. You need to make sure that your heart is balanced. If you glue it too low, the heart will like kind of tip over. <laughs> so you want to make sure that it's right down the center. You can also glue it around the top part of the heart if you like it like that. That's another way you can string them without having to worry about them flipping over. But I like mine kind of like in the middle. So it's just slightly over the middle so that it doesn't flip. The next garland I was actually inspired to make because I saw this gorgeous garland at Terrain, but I think it was like 48 bucks. So I'm like, I need to make something similar, but within my budget. <laughs> so I went to Hobby Lobby and I found some beautiful grapevine hearts. They were in the wedding section. And unfortunately they only had two packets. Otherwise I would have bought more and made my garland super long. <laughs> but you can buy as many packets as you'd like. And if you don't have a Hobby Lobby near you, I've linked some from Amazon that are very similar. And you really only need two materials, grapevine hearts and some brown floral wire to tie it all together. So it's super simple. You can just lay out your hearts and then you connect them with the floral wire. I cut out the pieces of floral wire in advance and I did about two inches of floral wire. You don't really need that much, but it's big enough that you can easily work with. So once you have your floral wire pieces, you can just slip it underneath two hearts and then just twist it in the back.
then you can just kind of tuck in the floral wire into the grapevine to hide away the little pieces but because the floral wire is brown you can barely see it and that's it would be to try to lay the hearts flat so that they kind of line up one next to the other if they do overlap a little bit it still would look cute but i just like the look of them like right next to each other and the last little DIY project, I saw this gorgeous heart figurine at Pottery Barn. Unfortunately, it's completely sold out now. And even at the time, it was pretty expensive. So I didn't even consider buying it. <laughs> but I thought it was so pretty and I figured I could try to make it for myself. So you'll need a heart box, a paintbrush, some white paint, some like grayish or beigey paint, baking soda, and a sponge. So it was a really simple project. The only thing I bought was the box, everything else I already had. I found this box at Michael's, but I'm sure that you can find very similar ones even at the Dollar Tree or any of the other dollar stores so you can make it for very very cheap. And it's really simple you've probably seen the baking soda trick all over the internet you just mix some baking soda into some paint to get this kind of thick consistency and then you just slather it on your box. <laughs> I did two coats of paint so i did one coat that was a bit thin just to kind of cover most of the red and then i did a second coat to finish up and cover most of it if your box is red like mine it doesn't have to be completely covered if you do see some little tiny peaks of red it's okay i think it adds a little bit of depth because it no longer looks red it looks kind of like grayish kind of burgundy i do think that adds a little bit of depth to it so i didn't make sure it was like completely white and completely covered then once it's almost completely dry i dabbed on a little bit of the grayish beigey paint. I didn't let it completely dry because I wanted it to kind of blend with the white paint and baking soda so it wasn't like a really harsh spot of gray paint on top of white. I did a lot of little dabs very lightly because if you press too hard since the baking soda is still kind of wet it'll literally just like pop off or like peel off of it and then I would also just go in with the brush and just lightly swipe the gray paint across just so that the spots with the sponge were not like perfect and it just kind of looked like messy and like stone. If you do want to seal it you can maybe seal it with a matte sealant so i'll link one below in the description i didn't seal it because i'm not planning to put it in like a very high traffic area but when i do put it away before spring i'll probably put it in a plastic bag just so that it doesn't get damaged so it was a really simple project and it looks so good That is it, just some really simple neutral DIYs. Some of them you can even consider dupes for more expensive decor. <laughs> but I hope you like all of the DIYs and that you give them a shot for yourself. If you do make any of the DIYs, definitely tag me in them on Instagram. I would love to see them. And if you don't already, follow me on Instagram. I'm constantly sharing DIYs, budget finds, and all the little updates I make to my home. So make sure you follow me there. Make sure that you subscribe and I'll see you all very soon in another video. Bye!